Okay, in the last video, I was just showing you how to bring in your black, your black shape logo, how you can add effects to it, how you size it on your 8 by 10 by 350 pixels per inch. So how do you save it to put it onto Canvas online? You turn off all your backgrounds. You can decide to have effects on it or not, but it needs to be all black. So if you're using any effects, make sure your blacks, yeah. your effects are either pure white or pure black. And then any gradations like from the drop shadow and stuff will be from the effect, but we don't want any color in this version. And then I'm going to say file, save a copy. And then you change the format type from PSD to PNG with the transparent background. Saving that to my folder. So now you will see this PNG. This one has the stroke and the drop shadow to it, is otherwise transparent. My earlier PNG didn't have either of those effects. So you can decide what looks best, but both of these are black, a black shape logo. All right. And then you can take that black shape logo and put it up into your assignment. I'm just going to take my entry, edit it, and add. this new version of my final black shaped logo. But it has to be a PNG. So it has an empty background. There's my new one. Okay. And so what this is, is a final black shape logo saved as a PNG at 350 pixels per inch. All of these things are important, but this is with, you just need one black finished logo. You can decide what effects to add as long as they don't have any color. Okay, so those are two different black versions. Now, how do I do color versions? Well, once I have the EPS in there, I want to duplicate it with Command-J, turn off the, the one behind. I'm going to turn on a gray background just so you can see. So these are the effects I put onto the white logo, or to, I'm sorry, to the, the black shape logo. I can open up those effects by double clicking, and now I can give it a gradient. It's at 100% right now. I can choose the gradient. I have so many things to choose from. This is our campus colors, which is an interesting gradient. I did kind of rainbow last time. I could try purples. I could try basics. I could try, ooh, some iridescence. So this is a big change in, um, in Photoshop where they give you so many pre-built gradients. But you can also customize your own. try neutrals, very subtle gradients. This one's called cloud. <laughs> so they're very subtle gradients. And you see they look great on gray. They probably look great on black, but they're not going to look so good on white. You can play with different ways. So you just got to play around and see what your options are. It's doing a straight linear gradient at an angle. Let's see. Let's do these kind of bluish grays. I like that. Let's try that. Okay, then you can also just do a solid color overlay. So I have red here, but then you can play with its opacity. If you want to get a tint to everything, you give a greenish tint. It's a very fluorescent kind of green, but I can give that slight tint to those blues underneath. So 
So these are just color versions of your black shape logo. You can have fun with it. You can even add a second gradient overlay. So if you use a little plus sign, you can layer multiple gradients on top of each other. So if I do kind of a, an iridescent, like rainbowy one, I should probably show you how you can create your own gradient as well. You can customize your own gradient just by clicking on the bars here, changing your color selections. And I can throw in any color I want. can move that around the gradient. I can set it at different um, distances from each other. So much you can do. Something uplifting. So you can definitely overdo your color for sure. I can play with the angle of it. I can play with the scale of it, how stretched out it is, how compressed. That seems pretty commercial, pretty Hallmark party. So let's go with that. Now you see that's at 100% opacity. I can layer that with my other gradient underneath. So there's just a ton that's going on that you can work with. And then the color overlay, I don't really feel I need so much anymore. Maybe with the blue, just to soften everything a little bit. And then of course you have your glows. I like the inner glow and I have it on a noisy glow that gives a little bit of texture. But I can also play with bevel and emboss, which will take the edges and give you highlights and shadows, treating it like it's three-dimensionally either pressed in or pushed out. So lots of effects to play with. I, I can just, keep messing with a lot of them and show you. But it, you get to determine what's effective for yours and then you get to mess with them. So bevel and emboss is fun because not only can you play with the contour of the emboss, so that's how strong the lighting is on the edge, right? And even the shape of the edge, right now it's just a straight kind of rounded edge, but I can make it scalloped I can make it wavy. I can make it a softer curve, which is a little bit nicer. And I can turn off the stroke, that white outline stroke, because that's kind of interfering with it. So we have a smooth emboss, but I actually really like the texture. For some reason, it's on a leaf pattern right now. <laughs> is a strange texture. These are all in the new versions. So I prefer something that's a more organic pattern like this grass pattern. And you can set the depth and the size so that it really just looks kind of like textured paper. Like that. And you can make it as big as you decide. This is all going onto our vector. I've still got the drop shadow on there. I can maybe try satin effects. A 
But because the bevel emboss is so strong, I'd have to move the satin up above it, or I'd have to take the overall opacity down for the satin to really show up. So these are all these things we play with. Now to save it, you're going to turn off the background. If you do a color version, it's nice that it works on gray, black, and white, right? And mine does. So it's kind of designed to be on white, and this might be what I print for my critique. I'm going to turn off the background, and then I'm going to save that as my color logo to print. First as a PSD. And then save a copy. And you'll save your PNG. Remember to turn off your background before you do that. And then it will, won't overwrite your black PNG because you changed the name, right? So this is my black shape copy. This is my color. It's just a color variation. And we can have lots of color variations, right? So this was the one I had done in a previous, it's like more like stained glass kind of rainbow effects. It has a stroke on it. It has an inner glow. It has the satin overlay which gives you kind of a haze of purple running through. It's got a color overlay of the reds, which make it the rainbow rather than just the blue and the, the green. And then it has a gradient overlay. And if I wanted to save this, I turn off the background and I say file, save a copy. It's already been saved as a PSD. Save it as a PNG. And you can post as many color variations as you want. You can post as many black shape variations as you want as PNGs, as long as they're all from the same vector. And you're required to have one to meet, meet all the, the expectations of the assignment. So now I'm going to upload those PNGs. You don't need to describe them as I do. I just do that to, to help be instructive. Try to make them similar sizes. A PNG with the background turned off. So I first have this one. This is my final color shaped logo. Shrink it a little bit. And it has the layer styles of stroke. It's got a few of them. Gradient. It's got the inner glow to it. Satin and then etc. because there are some others as well. Oh, drop shadow, I should probably add that in. So the things to post that you get credit for to meet all the requirements, at least one sketch, one black shape logo as a PNG at 350 at eight by 10, which also makes it print ready. You can have effects on it or not, as long as it's black and white. And then at least one color version. And then you'll be all done. Excellent. And then make sure you post it as your own reply. So you're going to post it as a reply here as instead of a, a reply to me. But either way, we'll see it. Just include your name. 